Here's the Monday morning sky. But that's okay. Because it's going to be a great day anyway. I told you it was going to be a great day. Less than 30 minutes after talking about how cloudy and gloomy the sky was, this is what the sky became. See, all you need is a little positivity and some hope. Well, I'm glad the sun did actually come through this morning because I left my window down. That could have been very messy if that rain had actually come through. Today was another awesome day at school because I just left a meeting. Yes, that's right. It was awesome because of the meeting I was in. Most people don't like to go to meetings, myself included. And admittedly, a majority of them... Woo! That's a bright sun. This particular meeting I love every month. It is the Continuous Improvement Team meeting. Now here in North Carolina, we are required by law, every public school is, to have a school improvement plan. It's usually a two-year plan. Some places it's a three-year plan. But you look at all of your data and you look at how are you going to improve. I've looked at a lot of school improvement plans over the years and some are better than others. I'm really excited about ours though because this is a plan that was truly put together by the teachers and it addressed the needs as the teachers communicated them. We as teachers, we're on the front line. We know the things we need to work on. We know the things that we need to improve. They told us what they wanted to learn. We found someone to teach it. And even better, we're finding out that we actually have staff, people on our faculty, that are excellent in all these things, and it's giving those people the chance to rise up and shine. We feel like the year has been a success so far because of the fact that we are allowing teachers to be two things, and that's A, a leader, and B, a learner. It's shaping up to be another beautiful 60 degree January day in North Carolina. What a crazy winter. Okay, I'm getting away from here uh, a lot earlier than I normally do because I've got some personal errands that I need to run. In addition to leaving earlier than I usually do, I'm doing something else I never do. I'm taking home this stack of paper so I can finish grading it tonight. I don't really like to take work home with me, but sometimes it's unavoidable. And we're at the point of no return with some of this stuff. So, oh, and this stack of papers that has grown in just a matter of days. Well, the kids are taking a test first period tomorrow. That's what I'm doing with that. Oh, gosh, it's winter time. up some wood to make some helicopters what am I going to get I've never really been a puzzle person but some of these look pretty cool to do that one just looks heinous and I've always you know wanted that room with all the model planes hanging from the ceiling. 
with the shelf lined with all the model cars or oh there we go right there 77 Pontiac Firebird classic and then we've got this classic that's a good one to have too I don't normally come home from school in this direction because this is the opposite side of town for me but I had to run those personal errands and I forgot just how backed up this little two-lane country road gets this time of evening. sometimes making mistakes. And in fact, studies have shown that the brain actually grows more when we make a mistake and then we learn from that mistake and change what we've done. When they have mapped the neural pathways created by learning new knowledge, more are created when initially a mistake is made than when you get it right the first time. And that should be an encouragement to really tackle something hard, something challenging, something that is going to push you because you'll probably make mistakes but you'll learn so much more as a result. That's really hard to remember when you're an adult, when you're a professional and you're supposed to be getting it right. And I was reminded of that just this week. We've been talking a lot in my math PLT about the content that we're teaching right now. We're looking at how we're grouping our students now. Do they need to be grouped by similar ability? Or is it, as some people say, better for all students if we group them according to mixed abilities. Is it different for one content area than it is for another? And I'm really happy that I'm at a school where we can work through those issues and we, even as teachers, can be given permission to get that wrong. Because I can tell you, the last few days I have felt like I've done nothing right. Definitely being challenged. Definitely making some mistakes definitely being forced to grow. And it's just so exciting for me to be able to be challenged professionally and to be given the opportunity to learn. Give somebody a reason to hope and learn something new every day. <laughs> 